after many, many months of contemplating, I finally decided to watch The Witcher. Hi, welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers. Today's TV show that I will be reviewing is the Netflix original, The Witcher Episode 1. If you have not yet seen this TV series or aren't familiar, consider this your spoiler warning. So let's get on to the review. So basically we just get right into The Witcher in this episode and we see him killing monsters, which is what The Witcher does. Now I am not a, I am not that I'm not a fan. I have not played the video games that this is based on. And I think, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some, you know, graphic novel that's been adapted from the video game, but I know this is a, a video game adaptation. I don't know whether the video game is good, whether it's bad. I know from a lot of different people that have played the game that told me I was missing out on playing the video game, that it's really good. It's an, you know, Im immersive story and that the TV show actually did it justice. Now I found the first episode. Now this is just the first episode. And just like the first episode of Game of Thrones, when I first watched it, I was like, what is this? And I was super bored. And I felt like that hour, cause this is like 61 minutes for this first episode was super, super long. It felt long. Most sometimes when I watch an hour movie or an hour TV show or something like that, if it's really good and I get fully immersed in it, I get, you know, I, I get sucked in. It has the same problem with, you know, even shadow shadow and bones had the same issue is that if you're not familiar with the source material already, you're kind of going, none of the names matter. None of the locations matter. You're more interested and you're like, you're more interested in the powers that he has or in that they have whatever, you know, whether it be shadow and bones, game of thrones or the witcher among others, even Harry Potter, you could add into this, to the mix. If you're not familiar with the source material, you kind of just are lost and kind of just in awe of what is presented to you for the first episode. There was way too much, just talking too much, talking too much dialogue. Like if I'm supposed to already care about what's going on, there was two deaths of you know, somewhat I, I would, uh, I'm assuming there, there were somewhat of an important characters, but within, you know, the first episode, they're dead and their deaths were not felt. I didn't care that they were the mother or the father of the young prince, the princess, even though the show was attempting, there was a lot of dramatic emotion. And for a show that is, is laying the foundation. I would have thought maybe they would have pushed a death like that. Maybe in episode three, at least after you've established, established a little bit more of the world. And I know they're trying to set up something here in the future. And again, I'm going without any backstory, without any information as to how the Witcher got his powers, as to why these ruling class are ruling, why they're at war, why anything. So it felt like I was lost in this first episode with saying that though, I found that the big sets I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for a big set. I, let, let me just tell you that, uh, any one of the shows, if you see me review a big budget, uh, TV series or a big budget movie, when you give me a big set and it feels like you're doing it in an, in an actual location. And I know it most likely it's, a uh, you know, green screen, CGI background, but it felt like there was a lot of extras. There was a lot of costume design. There was, there was a lot of world setup in the, the presentation. I'm always going to respect that when you guys, when, when production crews go above and beyond to make sure that we are immersed in a fantasy world like that, 
all it does for us viewers, at least for me, is that it makes me want to learn more. It makes me dive in there more. It makes me be with him at the swamp. It makes me be with him in that town. It makes me be wherever they, they are in, in, in that location. And a big set does a lot to wrap to, to just uh, take me in to their war to the world i the i already mentioned about the costumes i thought the costumes were superb they were they the attention to detail which is something not towards the later <laughs> episodes of game of thrones but definitely be, you know between most of them we'll say 95 percent of game of thrones the attention to detail as far as the costumes the props the setups were you know on another level you know uh starbucks coffee cup aside uh there there in this show it seemed like it was no different from the raggedy hair that was you, you would think there was no conditioner shampoos back then or whatever world this is uh set up and it feels like an old 1400 era kind of um world even though it is a fantasy obviously there's monsters and witches and witchers and powers and all that stuff so but even that it shows good period with i mean period piece where the hair is unkempt the clothes are are moist because of the whatever i'm assuming we'll find out so i appreciate the fact that they put a little bit more effort into that and also the fighting choreography hats off to the choreographers they don't get enough credit when you're definitely dealing with a fight an epic uh I want to say an epic battle, but it's not just an epic story where you're going to have uh, long fight scenes and to make them believable, I thought was great. And I don't know if Henry Cavill did practice that sword fight in this episode with that young girl, but Henry Cavill, I'm used to him, maybe not used to him swinging a sword like that. I'm used to him in, in fight scenes and battle scenes. He has somewhat of a choreography background and if you ever watch him on social media there was a youtube video where he goes over his workout routine where he kind of goes over a workout and he explains how in the witcher to be able to pull your sword swings to not hurt obviously the other people that you're you're fighting with but to make it believable you know and it's a very interesting even though it's you know if you're into the gym stuff you'll enjoy it if you're not and just a Henry Cavill fan, you'll still enjoy it, <laughs> you know, if you're a Henry Cavill fan. But the girl that was fighting with him, that was really, really good. It didn't seem like they did a stunt double for that, for those scenes. It seems like it was legit, those two, those, those two actors and actresses going at it. So hats off to, to not only the stars or those two characters, Henry Cavill, I can't remember the young lady's name. Uh, but hats off to both of them for for a very very good performance in that in this opening episode and more props to her because she definitely sold it she de she got killed at the end but nonetheless she she did good and finally Henry Cavill or The Witcher already st it already comes off as a dick even though I think that's the whole purpose of it but in the beginning. He kills Bambi, even though Bambi was already injured from the monster in the swamp. But, you know, when the Witcher looks at him, Henry Cavill looks at him and says, oh, you've had a bad day. And a couple minutes later at the bar, when he, when the girl that he fights and ends up fighting at the end, says, oh, you want some, some food? And he goes, no, I'm, I'm full. I had some veal uh, earlier. I'm like, no, he ate Bambi. So a little bit of a joke, but still, he's a dick for eating Bambi. All in all, I really enjoyed this uh, episode, even though, again, I don't know any of the backstory. I don't know any of the lore. I haven't played the video game, not a second. This is literally the first hour I have spent in the Witcher uh, universe. A bit boring, like I mentioned in the beginning, but I did find it entertaining and I will continue to watch this uh this series so if you're a fan of the witcher and a fan of the way i review uh episodes i'm gonna review this um episode by episode and i'll be posting them as i go along so hopefully you like my reviews let me know your thoughts down in the comments if you're a huge fan of this 
should I go and buy the video games and play that? Or will this get better as it goes along? Will it fill, fill in the gaps that I'm sure I'm going to have? Is playing the video game a good way of forming a better, a br more broader and a more intensive way, intense way to learn the universe, the world that the Witcher is living in? But anyways, let me know those thoughts and more thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.